Thank you very much, uh, Henrik. Um, so, um, I would like to tell you something about what, uh, what is going to happen in the reinvest project and uh, there will be some, some teasers uh, uh, included. Actually, the main aim is, is in the title of, of my keynote. It's towards smart en a smart energy system approach in Europe, enabling robust and cost-effective renewable energy investment strategies. Um, so the RE is actually renewable energy and the investment is the investment strategies. Um, we have just started this project, so uh, I will tell you some, something about the uncertainties that we are, are, are going to look at. Um, just to start uh, off the, the whole uh, context, uh, I would like to remind you all what, what Europe is looking into and many of the member states are looking into. We're looking into a future where we need to decarbonize our energy system 80 to 95 percent, maybe even 100 percent, uh, because some emissions needs to be left for the agricultural sector. Uh, if we want to live up to the Paris Agreement, the international uh, uh, agreements on, on, on climate change, this is what needs to happen. Um, in the short term, uh, the Energy Union has uh, a number of focuses. Um, some of, of them are directly related to climate change and some, I would say, are more related to markets. And some are not mentioned. Actually, I think quite a lot of things are not mentioned in the Energy Union that should be mentioned. Um, but many of you may know that the focuses are security of supply for electricity and gas. Uh, it's an integrated energy market. It's a focus on uh, energy efficiency, lowering CO2 emissions, and then also uh, research and innovation. And in, in this context, there's a number of new directives being um, revised and done, uh, which, is, which is happening over the, uh, the next years. Um, Other key focuses on, on other policies that have been uh, put forward since 2011 are uh, energy savings, more electricity in the uh, uh, energy sector, more decentralized production, gas is called a transition uh, technology, nuclear is believed to have continued contribution uh, together with reductions in imports uh, reductions in prices, more focus on renewables. Um, there's a recognition that we need to invest. So those of you who work with renewable energy uh, sy systems or scenarios will know that we are moving from a system that has heavy, that ha has a, 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 a lot of the costs on the fuels into a system where we have a lot of investments on, or uh, a, lot of, uh, of, a lot of the costs in the investments that needs to take place. There's also uh, a, a belief then uh, that uh, uh, the electricity prices will increase uh, until 2030 and then decrease. Um, and um, there's a belief that it's technically and economically possible to do uh, a lot of the reductions. Uh, I believe that it is certainly possible to achieve the goal of decarbonizing the energy sector, actually totally going to 100% renewables. The question is more how we do it and how much we're willing to spend on it, because some strategies are more expensive than other strategies. And this is what I will try to come a bit into today. Some of the decisions that we make on the short term can have a rather big consequence on the longer term. So we need to know in which direction uh, we're going. The vision in, in reinvest is to overcome silo thinking, which is present in a lot of both European and national uh, renewable energy strategies. It's present in a lot of uh, researchers. It's present in a lot of companies. It's present in the way we have designed the markets. Uh, it's, it's present basically everywhere we are uh, looking at the energy system because this is the way we used to do things. In reinvest we want to try and overcome this 
um, and we want to use what we call a two-dimensional approach uh, for, for, for using smart energy systems and I'll come a big, bit back, uh, back to that in a minute. Um, so we want to develop the, uh, the concept of smart energy system uh, in a more international context where we elaborate on what kind of roles does uh, uh, markets between the countries have, interconnections, what kind of role does big gas grids have. And we want to also support that these technologies are developed and that we move in the, the right direction, which is why in reinvest we have both more strategic partners and actually technology partners. A way we put, uh, put it in, in this new project is, uh, is like this. Here, here are, are, are the partners. It's mainly Aalborg University and Aarhus University with uh, Martin Greiner and Gorman Dresen, who's, who's here today. And then we have a number of, of private and public partners from uh, public authorities uh, to uh, uh, different uh, technology producers. And what we would like is to facilitate that we move from this uh, 2015 more silo based thinking into something where we where we look at the the system much more holistically some of the challenges that we see which has also been looked upon by many of the presenters here at the conference are that we, we can see that we have lower and lower uh, prices on renewables we can also see that the cost of storages, for example, batteries are falling. There are uh, a lot of opportunities to, uh, to replace uh, fossil fuels. If we look outside the window, we can also see that power plants are currently struggling. What, what kind of role do they have in the future? And these are some of the questions we would like to look at in the reinvest uh, project. How can we use storages to facilitate if onshore wind or wind power and PV is becoming the cheapest option, how do we facilitate that this is used uh, much broader than it, than it is today? How should we redesign our energy system so that we are able to use much more resources in the future? Another thing that is rather obvious, I think, for also for, for many of you at this conference is that there's really a, a narrow focus sometimes on the electricity sector. Um, and sometimes it's, it, it's not only the electricity sector, some people actually look at the electricity in the household and think this is the world. But electricity use in the household is one third of the electricity consumption, which is maybe one third of the overall energy consumption, including heating and transport which means that we have to really look, uh, look beyond and look uh, much more holistic at this uh, in order to use, um, to use storages in, in uh, the heating sector and the transport sector. And these balances are some of those that we would like to look at, not only in the Danish context, but in the European context. Other big dilemmas are uh, the balance between savings and uh, renewable energy production. When we look at this, it's very clear to us that energy savings, energy efficiency is a key part of the future. Otherwise, the renewable energy sources are not going to be enough uh, and the total cost of the system is for sure going to be higher than it should be. We have looked at, at that in the Heat Roadmap Europe project, which you know, and in a number of other uh, 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 projects like uh, a future uh, green building report we, we completed last year. Another part of, of the reinvest project is uh, transport. Um, many of the debates in transport are extremely silo oriented. Um, I, say, I think there's a lot of countries out that are much better at debating the solutions for transport than Denmark is, uh, uh, and, and uh, I also think that there are really a lot of solutions out there. But when we start to implement some of these solutions in the energy system, it becomes clear that if we want to decarbonize the transport sector, we should be extremely careful of using 
bio, uh, biofuels such as bioethanol or biodiesel because we will need all of this bioenergy to supply and support uh, in, in the industry or in the power plants that have to operate when we don't have any wind and, and PV. If we look at uh, transport and we use uh, biofuels, it's very clear that we will, we will not, if, if that's the only solution we have, we will not have enough resources for the other parts of the energy system. So these are some of the, the, the issues that we're looking at. We're also looking at what kind of international contexts are possible in the future. So in reinvest we want to create a, Europe, uh, a model of Europe with, uh, for example, a high level of nuclear, a high level of biofuel consumption, high level of intermittent renewables, high levels of C CCS, high levels of, of, um, of energy savings, in order to know where, where should we start and what is this as a robust investment strategy where we are standing right now. So just to dig down into one of these problems, I chose the current signs of something that is uh, uh, wrong in the way that we're thinking uh, or what at least our research indicates is wrong. If we look in, in the Danish and the northern European context it is extremely clear that the amount of wind and PV in the system is really increasing uh, these years. It is also clear that when we talk to those who have to find the solutions for how to use all of this wind and PV the main solutions are that we have to share renewables. Um, in the EDA Energy Vision that has, that's maybe some of you know, know and, and has also been mentioned in some of the presentations today, uh, we have investigated this context of a future where we have a lot more renewables than we have today and where Denmark is not the only country building a lot more renewables. There are some early, early warnings. And this is some of the research, or some of the data that we have already found in, um, in the reinvest project that shows the Danish uh, electricity spot prices uh, in relation to the wind power production uh, from 2009 until today. And without going into all the details, you can see that there's a clear tendency that when we go from zero to one, so from 0% wind to 100% wind, then we have uh, uh, decreasing electricity prices. So we see the early signs that we have some challenges with this. If we look over the years, this is also the case. We can, we can collect the data and we can find out uh, what has been the, the tendencies. And if we put in a curve where we, where we see what, how, how much the price is reduced, uh, going from 0% wind in the Danish context to, for example, 50% wind will reduce the electricity spot prices by maybe 40-50% in those hours. And this is empirical data, so you can go and look it up yourself. Um, and this has to be seen in the context that a lot of c countries are actually doing this. When we look at the prices, uh, for example, in, in Germany, here's the, the case for electricity prices in, uh, in, in northern Germany compared to the Danish wind, wind power production, which coincidentally also correlates with wind power production in northern, uh, northern Germany, then it is, it's clear that it's the same tendency. If we look at data from the UK, it's the same tendency. You could to some extent say that this is a market failure, but we can also look at this to say that it's a system design failure. So these are some of the, the things that we are, we are going to look into um, and I'll come a bit back to that in, uh, in a minute. What becomes clear is when you look at the energy statistics, now this is from, from uh, Fraunhofer in the Hydro Map Europe project, that if we only look at electricity, we're looking at one third of the system. So we need, need to activate the entire energy system. And this is what we want to want to have focus on in, in reinvest. We will we will try to use what we believe to be state of the art knowledge about how to design future systems. We have to do savings. 
we have to do energy efficiency, change the vehicles into electric vehicles, change the power plants into some that are more efficient, use the heat pumps, use waste heat resources. We also have to increase the amount of, of renewable energy significantly. Uh, and as, uh, as you have, uh, have heard before, we, we believe that uh, a smart energy system approach where we use the grids of the different parts of the system is, is really important. Um, some of you have seen this diagram before. Uh, in, in the reinvest project, we're going to look much more into to detail about energy storages, not only in one country, but across countries. The diagram shows the differences in prices between uh, storing electricity and storing, um, storing in, in, in thermal storages or storing in gas or in, in liquid fuels. Um, and it is very clear that the, the costs are reduced significantly if we uh, store in, for example, thermal storages instead of electricity storages. It's also very clear that there's a scale of difference between these storages. So if we want to use electricity storage, we need to extend the electricity grid. Uh, if we want to use the thermal storage, we need to extend the thermal grids. And the cost between these grids and storages are really, really significant. And this, these, it is, it, it's indi the, st the studies indicate that uh, storing in, in, uh, uh, in electricity uh, also including the grids is much, much more expensive uh, than, than, than storing in, in the thermal storages. Another thing that is really important when we talk about storages is, apart from building the grids, uh, that we need somehow to overdimension some of the issues, some of the technologies that we are looking at. A lot of the presentations that I heard are dealing with heat pumps, for example, and the people are frustrated that the prices don't fluctuate enough or that uh, you, you, you don't have the right, uh, you, you don't have the possibility to operate because the prices are too high, for example. Uh, but actually, if we look into the future, they need to not operate 50% of the time, which is a completely other challenge because if they operate 100% of the time, how can we facilitate to use the intermittent resources? The same argument goes for, uh, for example, electrolysis. If we want to use electrolysis to cre create what we call electrofuels, we cannot have 2,000 megawatts of electrolysis in the Danish system, for example, just operating constantly. They should operate according to the wind. So these are, are really key challenges, not only technical challenges about where to place them, but also how to actually construct a market that can, um, that can make this, uh, this happen. When we look into the future, um, and we do analysis of future scenarios, we need to find out what kind of prices to use on technologies and fuels. And uh, I just included some, some slides from our EDA Energy Vision about what kind of considerations we had when we, when we did that. Um, one of the things that is uh, indicating the level of fuel, fuel costs is, for example, the, the oil prices in the world. They correlate with coal prices, they correlate with biomass prices. And when we look back in time, it is clear that oil prices have not been constant. Fuel prices in general have not been constant. They have been fluctuating up and down. If we want to look towards 2030, 2050, we need to know what do we think will happen in the future. And a lot of you have also talked about projections of different prices. There's a lot of experts who say what the prices in the future will be. And um, these are some of the expert, expert projections. And uh, what th these are from the Danish Energy Authority that correlate with the International Energy Agency numbers. And uh, what you see, the light, the light blue one is, is the, the current oil prices. Actually, it's a bit lower than what is on this graph now, right now. Um, 
and the others are projections into the future. You can see something happened at the financial crisis because at that point suddenly people believed that the prices will increase all of a sudden instead of decrease and then increase. But as an energy system modeler, it's really hard to know which of these should I choose? How should I create my future? And for sure this will have an effect on some of the decisions I have to recommend when I do investment strategies or scenarios uh, for the future. Another problem that some of you have been dealing with is electricity prices. And the red line here shows the past electricity prices and all of the others are projections of what could happen in the future. And you see it's very easy to choose which one to pick. I heard some of the presentations, few mentioned that we believe that the electricity prices will increase. Also, uh, this is believed, uh, yeah, this is believed in a number of analysis, excluding uh, investments in, for example, heat pumps, if, if this is the assumption. The empirical evidence shows something completely different. They show that the prices are going down and not only in the Danish context but in the European context and when we have more and more wind the prices will, will go down. So this is something that we have, have been dealing with in the EDA Energy Vision. And it becomes very clear that although electricity exchange or gas exchange can be important, actually the design of the complete system is much more important. We can trade and we can maybe earn a few billion euros, but if we design the system in a bad way, the cost could be 10 billion euros higher or lower. Uh, another thing is that instead of trying to choose one of these, we should design a system that is robust and cost effective in a number of different futures, including some where the electricity prices are high or low, or where the fuel prices are high or low. In the reinvest project, we have the two-dimensional approach. We use the smart energy system approach and we use the international context to, to, uh, to also integrate more and more renewables. So we believe that we need to look into both of these areas uh, in order to find uh, cost-effective uh, solutions. Again, the example of the EDA Energy Vision shows that it is possible to do this transition and we can actually make it at the same cost or lower uh, compared to today. But it's also clear that when we look into the international context, there's a number of problems that arise. We can have a problem of exporting because there's wind in the other end, or we can export and get nothing for it. Or we can have a problem with importing because those in the other end also have to have a power plant operating and we were expecting to use that. So it's a technical problem or it will be very expensive for us to import. The key thing is to have a rather flexible, uh, a rather flexible system in the future where we are able to use storages uh, much more in intelligent across sectors than we have done today. Moving up into the European system, I believe one of the things that we have to focus us on, is on in the future is the heating and cooling sector, which has been a major theme at this conference. And uh, we did some recommendations uh, s some time back uh, regarding, uh, regarding this where we believe that we have to have high ambitions on energy savings, but we also have to separate, for example, uh, production of renewables with the, um, um, uh, the insulation of houses in the, in the building codes. Another thing that is, is really key is to start focusing on the redesign of the energy system. And uh, one of the things that we have, we have done is, is is written in a, in a report here called Smart Energy Europe, you can look it up if you're interested, where we've used some of the things that we used in the EDA Energy Vision and put this into the, to the European uh, context. 
So these are some of the ideas that we are working on in reinvest uh, and I hope you'll be following the project within the next four years. We should have some results. Thank you.